All right, everyone, we have some data in for the PlayStation 5 launch month of November. Now, this isn't the US MPD, this isn't Japan or anything else like that. This is our first full month of data, or at least our first launch month, I guess is better to, uh, to say, of data. This comes from the UK. And uh, notably, the UK actually had quite a bit of console sales for the month of November. Usually, the UK sales, I'm not going to say they're inconsequential, but you know, they're, they're just a, a small part of the pie. And it still is true, it's a small part of the pie. But I mean, almost a million consoles sold in November. So, crazy. This comes from GameIndustry.biz, as you're seeing on screen. It says almost 900,000 game consoles were sold in the UK during November, according to the latest GFK market data. The harbor data is for the four weeks ending November 28th, so technically missing a couple days, but this is how they gather data in the UK all the time. Uh, in terms of home consoles, not including handhelds, uh, it is the eighth biggest month for console sales and the second biggest month for console revenue behind December 2013, which was when the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One received big new shipments. The most successful machine of the last month was the newly released PlayStation 5, which means the Nintendo Switch had to settle for second place. Of course, I mean, they could have said the Xbox, but nope. The Switch actually outsold the Xbox, so there's that. Uh, for only the third time in two years. Even so, it was a big month for Switch, with hardware sales up 96% over the previous four weeks. The console had a very successful Black Friday, and so far this year, Switch hardware sales are up 63.1% year-on-year. In terms of boxed software, 2.3%. 8 million games were sold in the UK last month, which is October 25th through November 21st. That's their tracking period. Uh, Switch games were the most popular of the month, accounting for nearly 35% of all games sold, followed by the PlayStation 4. Nintendo was the top publisher of the month, thanks to continued strong sales of Animal Crossing New Horizons, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Minecraft, and Super Mario 3D All-Stars. The company held off strong competition from Ubisoft, which saw big sales of Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Watch Dogs Legion. The biggest selling new game of the month was Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. The Activision shooter sold significantly fewer box units than previous games in the franchise, with the vast majority of sales coming through digital download. The other big new games in the charts is PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 game Spider-Man Miles Morales. The title reached number 4 and primarily sold on PlayStation 5. In fact, it was comfortably the biggest PlayStation 5 launch game ahead of Call of Duty. The launch of new consoles unsurprisingly caused a spike in the accessories market. Nearly 1.25 million accessories were sold in November from October 25th to November 21st, uh, which is up 61.4% month on month and 48.3% compared with last November. The best selling accessories of the month were the PlayStation 5 DualSense controller, which was number one, and the Pulse 3D headset for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 at number two. The PlayStation 4 DualShock drops from the top spot to number three. Meanwhile, the new Xbox controllers debuted at number four, the Shock Blue, and number five, the Carbon Black, and number nine, Robot White. Other new accessories in the charts include the Media Remote for PlayStation 5 at number seven, the DualSense Charging Station at number eight, and the PlayStation 5 HD camera at number 11 here's the uk top 20 selling boxed games uh for november uh so you see cold, cold war at top assassin's creed at, at number two uh fifa at three uh Mar marvel spider-man miles morales at four watch dog legion at five animal crossing at six mario kart eight at seven the switch version of minecraft at eight uh super mario 3d all-stars at nine fortnite the last laugh bundle at ten Ring Fit Adventures at 11, Marvel's Avengers at 12, Minecraft Dungeons at 13, Grand Theft Auto 5 just keeps charting at number 14, Hyrule Warrior, Warriors Age of Calamity at number 15, Demon Souls at 16, Star Wars Squadrons at 17, 51 Worldwide Games at 18, Just Dance 21 at 19, and Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time, at number 20. So, obviously, uh, the big thing to take away from this is, yes, the Switch performed really well. If you care about Switch sales, it did good in the UK. It was a really good November. But a few things. Where's Xbox? <laughs> I mean, the Xbox Series X clearly sold because the Xbox Series X slash S controllers are in the top of the accessories thing. So, like, three different controller variations are 
in the accessory sales. So people did buy Xbox, but there's no notes about Xbox sales. And I, I think that's one thing I sometimes hate about uh, these little sales data breakdowns because we don't really get raw access to this data. We, we don't get raw access to the data like GameIndustry.biz does. So when they have access to this data, what we want to hear is we want to hear a comparison of everything. And what we heard is that PlayStation 5 is dominating in the UK. Although, is that surprising? PlayStation 4 was massive in the UK. So PlayStation 5 having a massive debut in the, there as well, that's not shocking. Uh, and that's good. Good for Sony. I know people act like, you know, all I ever do is talk negatively about the PlayStation 5, but I actually legitimately am excited about the PlayStation 5 and can't wait to get one on hand myself whenever they're actually in stock and I have the money. I can't ever seem to get me having the money for one and it being in stock to line up. It will someday. When it's not so hard to get, it will someday. But honestly, I think that this is great. Good, great for Sony. Great for gaming. Uh, I just find it weird that we're hearing about PlayStation 5, we're hearing about Switch, but not hearing anything about Xbox. Clearly, Xbox launched in the UK, so why are we hearing nothing? Did the launch just, like, bottom out? Was it a, was it a flop? Even if it was, I want to hear about it. So, kind of interesting that they really only compared two of the three major systems out there instead of uh, looking at all three. Again, not an issue that's going to happen with the MPD report. We'll get a look at all. We'll get a look across the whole spectrum. Obviously, in Japan, we always get a look at the whole spectrum every single week. So, for some reason, the UK though is like, eh, we're just not going to really talk about it for some reason uh, at this outlet. I checked a few other outlets that reported this as well. None of them are really talking about Xbox beyond the accessories market where they had three in the top. And I figure if people are buying extra Xbox uh, Series X slash S controllers, then they must have systems. But whatever. Uh, honestly, this is nothing but good news for Sony. Um, if you're a Nintendo fan, I wouldn't really worry about it. I mean, what do they say? This is only the third time in two years that the Switch was not the number one selling hardware for the month. Is it really that big of a deal? We'll, we'll see what happens in December. December will be a big big calling card too. Will PlayStation 5 top Switch in December? I don't know. It is the new hot thing. So I'm not surprised. Uh, the UK is very heavily skewed towards Sony. Uh, so it, it having massive sales is, is what I expected, and I'm glad it delivered. It would have been extremely disappointing if PlayStation 5 didn't have a massive debut. Uh, but it did. So Kudos to them. Miles Morales obviously being the top-selling software. I had a feeling that that's the top-selling software across the board for all PlayStation 5 in every region. I'm guaranteeing that Miles Morales is probably at the top. I know Call of Duty is going to be up there as well because it's, it's a really big game. But that's going to be on all platforms that it's present on anyways. Can't say all platforms because <coughs> they still don't support Switch. Those bastards. And now they're really not going to support Switch with Next Gen out. So I just, I'm just happy, you know? I think it's good to see everyone successful. I think Microsoft is actually pretty successful in the moment. I think they're seeing their Game Pass subscriptions going up, and we'll hear about that soon. Uh, I obviously think they had a really great debut in the United States, which is their primary market. might be their only real big market, but uh, they, they seem to always perform well in the U.S. Even the Xbox One did extremely well in the U.S. Uh, obviously, Switch has been killing it. Switch continues to kill it. I mean, even though Nintendo didn't have the top-selling uh, hardware spot, they were dominating in terms of unit sales for software. And so, obviously, uh, Nintendo's still killing it. Sony's killing it. We're actually at a point now where I feel like we're reaching an equilibrium this holiday, where all three major players in the console market are performing well and, and doing what they should be doing. Isn't that wonderful? I think that's wonderful. You know, for, for all the talk about how, oh, the PlayStation 5 has design flaws. Oh, you know, the Xbox doesn't have games. Oh, Nintendo didn't really deliver us much here in 2020. All three console manufacturers are selling oodles of consoles and selling out. All three of them are selling oodles of games and selling out. And all three of them are making money hand over fist. They are highly successful right now. So I think this is good. And, and the thing is, I'm finding that a majority of consumers that I talk to, regardless of which platform they perform, are happy. Like, there's all these people, like, attacking Xbox owners. Like, why would you buy an Xbox Series X or S? It has no games. Well, beyond the fact that S has now been proven to be an emulation beast. Holy crud, is it a beast. It, it might be, I mean, yes, the X is obviously an even bigger beast. But for $300, the kind of things that you can emulate 
on a Series S for $300, if you're into emulation, oh my God, it's like a must-have for 300 You could not find a better deal on the market for emulation. But that's just emulation. A lot of people that own the S and X are, are, are berated uh, online anyways. I don't think they're berated in person. But online, um, like I own a, a Nintendo Switch, a gaming PC, and well, it's an editing PC that, that can game, I guess I should say. <laughs> and then obviously I have an Xbox Series X and I get berated at times. Why do you own an X? It has no games. And I'm like, well, Game Pass. Game Pass isn't that great. And it's just a bunch of old games. Who cares about old games? Well, a lot of people care about old games or we wouldn't be bitching about the lack of virtual console on Switch. Uh, if people didn't care about old games, uh, Sony wouldn't provide a streaming service specifically built around their old content like clearly uh, we wouldn't care about final fantasy 7 remake if we didn't care about final fantasy 7 which is an old game in fact if we don't care about old games why are we talking about demon souls oh my gosh look at this demon souls remastered remake thing on playstation 5 again it's an old game from playstation 3 if we didn't care about old games we wouldn't care about any of these games but we do care about old games we care about where gaming has come from uh so it, it is something that matters and game pass isn't just for old games i know it feels that way for some but i mean there's a plenty of 2019 and uh, some 2020 games on game pass and there's going to be more because every single new you know i don't want to call it an exclusive but let's say every single microsoft controlled ip is going to be on game pass day one and now you can pre-install those games so you don't even have to wait uh, to play them when day one hits. You can already have them installed, all the updates ready to go. So, again, I think Game Pass is fantastic. Now, that's actually a better argument to get an Xbox One right now, you know, or, or something like that, an Xbox One S or, or something that's cheaper. But, honestly, I think that everyone's winning. I am loving my time with my Xbox. I'm playing more games on it now than I think I've played on an Xbox in a long time. And when I get a PlayStation 5, despite my concerns over the design philosophy of the system and how a lot of people were praising the design without any actual evidence that they should be, and now the evidence is out there that the design is completely flawed, the air is completely choked off, there are parts of the system not even being cooled, and it's going to lead to long-term failure in addition to the fact that the SSD is soldered on the board, so good luck, you're going to get 5 to 10 years of life out of your system uh, before it just doesn't work at all anymore, and it's the only system I can safely say a decade from now you're going to hit that power button and it's not going to turn on. Um, but uh, that being said, that doesn't mean I'm not like excited for PlayStation 5. I'm excited because of the games. I'm excited because of the UI. I think the UI on PlayStation 5 from everything I have seen looks amazing and, and should maybe even be the market standard for UI systems. You know, Microsoft and Nintendo might need to take note. The hint system looks fantastic. Again, Microsoft and Nintendo, take note. Nintendo in particular, you had a hint system on Wii U. This is like taking it to the, you know, times in it by a thousand. You guys should get on top of that since you can, you know, you like to provide help for people. Much to walk through uh, manufacturers' chagrins. Uh, but yeah, I think that this is good. I think the PlayStation 5 is exciting. I think Miles Morales looks amazing to me. I can't wait to play it myself. Uh, you know, obviously Astro, Astro Boy, or Astro Bot, whatever it's called, uh, Sack Boy. I think it's Astro Bot and Sack Boy. I think both those games look amazing. I'm honestly excited even more for PlayStation 5, believe it or not, than I am any other platform because. I did dabble a little bit in Xbox games, whether it was on PC or on my old Xbox One X. Uh, I did not dabble in PlayStation 4. So one thing that's exciting for me, believe it or not, about the PlayStation 5 is it's backwards compatible with all the old PlayStation 4 games. So I can go back and play the God of Wars. I can go back and play the Horizon Zero Dawns before Forbidden West comes out. I can go ahead and play uh, The Last of Us and Last of Us Part 2 because I didn't even play the original Last of Us. Like I can go ahead and enjoy these experiences for the first time time and that's amazing to me granted that's a great reason to just go buy a playstation 4 right now they're cheap right but if i'm gonna spend money on a system why don't i just get the new one that gets the new games and the old games right now you can argue well wait for a redesign and i get that argument you know you want to say just buy a playstation 4 now and you know just get the slim when it comes out or something that's better designed i hear you on that but i'm also kind of a tech junkie so no amount of old tech is going to satisfy my tech 
junkie needs. And I'm also a YouTube uh, content creator that talks about video games. And I would love to do more coverage of the PlayStation platform, which I can't do because I don't have the PlayStation 5 on hand. Uh, that's why you're seeing more coverage skewed towards Nintendo, which will all probably always happen on my channel. It's called Nintendo Prime. I have an admitted bias for Nintendo. Uh, and then obviously more coverage of Xbox because I have one. I have a Series X. Got to get that PlayStation 5, man. Scalpers, do me a favor. Just send me one out of the kindness of your heart, and I'll stop blasting you in every video. Okay, no, I won't. Scalpers suck. All right, folks, I'll catch you guys in the next video.